Okay, so thanks for talking to me again, Jessica. So we were just talking about, you know, stress and kind of the effects on on our body and how it affects our brain function and some of your personal experience with some of that. And one of the things um, that I wanted to ask you about is, I know we've talked a little bit about what types of stress there are. So it's not just, you know, physical stress. There's, there's all kinds of things that we may not think of that lead to kind of the same effects. Like if I'm emotionally upset, does that really affect my body physically? And I mean, and it does, and that's important. So I just wanted to like get your thoughts on the types of stress. Yeah. So um, we're not always aware of the things that are stressing us. And going back to my concussion, um, that's where I really started to see the immediate response in my body as to what was working for me and what wasn't. So um, there are d different kinds of stress, like we have our physical stress. So that can be physical pain. Um, we have chemical stress um, that can also be things that we put into our bodies like foods. Um, we have environmental stress that can be noise, lights. Um, and then we also have emotional stress. The thing about our bodies is it's not distinguishing between the kind of stress. It only identifies it as danger as a problem. So um, what's important to understand is being able to take a look at it from a holistic level. And for example, if you're somebody who eats 100% organic food, but you're living in a really, really angry mindset, you're using organic food to feel the emotions of anger. So we, it's important to be paying attention to the interconnectedness and the related aspects of it all. And some of these things, as you say, are kind of subtle. So for somebody like myself, fluorescent lights are really difficult. Um, and they have an incoherent frequency, which then creates incoherence in my brain. And I notice within 20 minutes of being in a building that has um, fluorescent lights, I don't feel very well. Other people might not be so sensitive, but it can be that low grade thing that is depleting your energy all day long that you're not even aware of. So if you, um, we talked about last time, this notion of the stress meter, and I, I don't know if you wanna bring that up right now, but this was a huge aha for me. And this was a bit of a game changer in how I looked at stress. Um, so I'd spent a lot of time trying to manage the outside world and fix the outside world so I could feel better. And I've learned that, so when you take a look at this, if your energy levels are depleted, then the more impact that stress has in your life. And so the work for me has really been transitioning and recognizing what I can control in my life and what I don't have any influence over. So I can't stress about um, what policy is being made around, let's say COVID. I have no control over that. So I can think about it, but there's no value in me putting a lot of energy in that direction. I don't have any influence over that. So it's better for me to be spending energy on the side of the screen about the things that energize me and add value to my life. So where we focus our attention grows. So if we are focusing our attention on negative thoughts, fear, um, the world is going sideways, um, thinking about what hasn't worked in the past, thinking about all the problems that might happen in the future, we are scattering our energy in all these different directions um, that actually we have no control over. So it's coming back to, as many people say, into the present moment, and taking 100% responsibility and ownership for what we can do. So it is those small daily things that we can be doing to energize ourselves um, and to making us feel good. So when we do have these outside stress events, they don't knock us off so quickly and we can bounce back faster. So this reminds me of like something that I would have to practice. Like 
like maybe like some um, maybe almost like a maybe a mindfulness practice, but having to, I can see how this would be a good visual to help me focus more on those things I can control rather than the ones that I can't and try to um, just improve my general functioning. So I can see how this would be really helpful outside of of being aware of this and maybe using this as a guide, what are some other uh, like modalities maybe that you've used that help you to, to regulate that stress? Well, as a result, as I said earlier, my journey, I've been a professional experimenter. So I've tried a lot of different things and I'm not saying these are right for people. So I'll give you kind of a span of some of the things that I've tried. And then after that, I'll, I'll kind of connect with some actual tangible things that people can walk away with today that they can do in their daily lives um, without having to go on a meditation retreat <laughs> or getting a massage or, um, so some of the things that I've tried, I, I do Qigong and Qigong has been really powerful for me. It's been a life changer. Um, acupuncture, energy work. I do neural feedback. I do file, biofeedback. Um, I work with um, a headset called BrainTap, which helps change the frequency in your brain. And it's got a, a light therapy to it. So it has kind of five modalities in one. And it's fascinating. Um, I do a lot of breath work, but my breath work isn't necessarily sitting cross-legged in a meditation for two and a half hours in the morning um, before I start my day. It is every hour I have a signal on my phone that reminds me to breathe and have a glass of water. So in that moment, I take the intention and have a breath and let go of the things that are not working with me. So I visualize letting go of my stress, my mental stress, my physical stress, my emotional stress, breathing in something that makes me feel good and having a sip of water and moving on. Um, and yeah, yeah, so the, the opportunities in terms of exploring, I'm happy to talk to somebody about this, um, or I can give you a list of some of the things that I've tried. Um, and each one has brought its own flavor and own aspect. And I find what I do is I bounce between different things and I'm learning to connect with what my body wants. So right now I'm not using brain tap. I'm not being pulled in that direction, but I am doing a lot more uh, different kinds of breathing techniques. And I'm also not somebody who um, does well with just meditation. My brain spins and meditation um, is commonly thought of just sitting there, but there's lots of different kinds of meditations we can do. So there's walking meditations. Um, Qigong is a form of breath and movement. Um, singing, singing, it sounds so silly and making a rhyme, but when you smile, you change the neural chemistry and biochemistry in your body. So just the act of smiling can pull you out of a stress response, whether it feels authentic or not, but the physical change in your body changes your brain chemistry. So, so even in the Qigong class I, I took, um, they were talking about how kids smile 400 times a day and an adult smiles 28 times. So wow. now I have a practice that when I'm driving, <laughs> my practice is to try and smile 400 times a day. Wow. I was just going to say that reminds me of back in my customer service days where they would tell you literally smile before you pick up the phone because it affects your tone of voice thinking that is the corniest thing I've ever heard in my life. But you're right. I mean, I can see how that makes sense just because smiles are so contagious. I can be talking to someone and not even thinking kind of like in that way. And then if someone else smiles, you're, it's instantly has some kind of an effect. So that is really, that is really cool. So that's something that even sitting at your desk, dealing with everything you have to in a day, um, just deciding to smile can actually chemically make a difference. It makes a difference in your own body. In addition to, you know, we're, because here we're talking to people who are leading and dealing with real problems in their organizations, right? And being a leader is about how you influence others. So that simple act of creating a smile and practicing that, um, it has a ripple effect and affects the people around you. 
So our heart has an electromagnetic field of about 12 feet. When we pick up information from the environment, it comes into our heart before it goes to our brain. Our brain's electromagnetic field is about six inches. So you know when you walk into a room and it's really tense, but nobody said anything, but you can feel the tension. Mm -hmm. That's because our, our heart is picking up on that frequency of, of the emotion or the energy that's going on in that room. And then it's sending those signals to our brain. So that act of smiling and changing your energy and your disposition is influencing everybody around you on an unconscious level. I had no idea. That is really, that is really, really interesting. Thank you so much for sharing. And I, I really appreciate you, you know, sharing this information with us. And I look forward to talking to you, talking to you more. Well, thank you for having me. And um, I look forward to our next conversation.